And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Greetings, everyone. Another week has flown by. We're back. Seven bells for us being back. All right. Before I begin, I just want to say, might as well get it over with, <clears throat> everything that we speak of here on Progressive Discussions, Progressive Warriors Unite, Progressive Warriors for Bernie Sanders, feel the burn, everything we discuss politically is part of our series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch, soaking that conch energy from the briny deep, from Davy Jones's locker where, where all the Republicans in the Congress and Senate, including the Hillary supporters that are actually... Uh, more, more upsetting than the uh, teabaggers because we know the teabaggers are just naturally brain cell deficient. Uh, but the Hillary supporters on the Democratic side are supposed to be intelligent. Because, you know, progressives, Democrats, well, then in general, liberals, whatever you want to call the, the left side of the fence, are proven to be much more intelligent than right wingers except those right-wingers on top with an agenda. You ever hear, remember the old saying, crazy like a fox? You have, a, you know, you want people to think you're naive and stupid, but you have a plan. You have a plan. I got a plan, Sam. Got a plan, Sam. Plan, Sam. Construction. <laughs> oh yeah, I wanna, I wanna uh, please excuse and apologize for any construction noises you hear. The uh, the building next door is it seems to be in perpetual <laughs> remodeling every fucking weekend, yeah. at least every Saturday. I don't know why, but yeah. You know. Well, we're gonna lay a little Chisler's Hall of Shame on you, I guess. In this case, um, the inductees are um, the health insurance dental plans. Um, you know, the insurance companies that handle dental, uh, the dental industry, uh, social security uh, disability, and, uh, you know, state, state welfare, uh, 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 um, human, what is it, board of, uh, human, health and human services, or, uh, Mm -hmm. Whatever they call themselves. Health and Human Services. Yeah. Something like that. We're going to induct them all. But I have to explain why. Okay. I have um, um, a question for you uh, after my statement. Okay. Um, back in the day when I, there was, I did not have a good dental plan. Because no, no one seems to want to pay for dental work. Really, it's like it's like pulling teeth. Uh. Hold on. The lev these are the levity bells. It's like pulling teeth. Get it? All right. I didn't have a dental plan, so I needed at that time I needed um, two root canals with crown, and I. I was I certainly could not afford back then I could not afford it now actually to be paying over a thousand dollars per tooth so 
I have two molars missing. Mm. In my lower, my, my lower se section. Now, when they were pulled, the um, the uh, two Indian girls were giving me a lecture about how important molars are. We use them to chew. A uh, duh, uh, yeah. And what's your point? I can't afford to get the root canal and crowns. How does that change? You know, and the, and the dentist at the time says, I told you you need to see the dentist regularly with his uh, ponytail flopping in the breeze and his bald head. Oh boy. You know, it's easy to give lectures when, when you're on the other side of the fence, the financial fence. Uh. Yeah. So, now we're in the, in the present. I go to the dentist. All right, I have some uh, broken fillings or missing fillings that fell out. You know, a little touch-up work. But I'm, a, I, I'm all right. You know, I brush the back of my teeth. I use hydrogen peroxide. My teeth are, are in good shape. So anyway, I don't really eat sweets very often at all. Um, so they tell me, well, you're... you're you have a good dental plan, but no dental plan, including Medicare, will pay for implants. Nobody will pay for implants. Would you like to set up an appointment with a specialist and have implants put in, but you have to pay out of your pocket? This is the uh, the hygienist from, from India. The last time I heard what, an imp what implants cost was... Twenty-seven thousand yeah, dollars. But how many? For the full, you know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They they cost a fortune, and um, you know the the hygienist was uh, Indian or Pakistani. She talked very fast with a, with a heavy accent. She got annoyed with me yeah, because man. I asked her to please repeat yourself. Ooh. You figure that out. But anyway, she says you got to pay out of pocket. I says no, I I'm, I can't and I won't. Uh, I looked up dental implants. I googled it. They look like it looks like a screw you would get from Home Depot. It is very simple, crude, basic hardware. It looks just like a, a screw you would get from a hardware store, a stainless steel screw, with this, I guess, whatever it's made out of polymer or the, the tooth. And the tooth is probably made in a third world country, maybe from China. So, and how long do you think it takes? I hear the drilling of the, the to anchor the implant is fast, and it's similar to a carpenter drilling into a, a plank of wood. Zip, it's in. And they're charging all of this money. Shame on you, dental industry. Now, I could say shame on you uh, Medicare, shame on you, uh, mm -hmm. health insurance company, but health insurance companies and um, uh, Medicare, they pay what they consider to be uh, fair and reasonable fees, what they consider fair and reasonable. Now, maybe it's possible that the dental industry refuses to come down in price to sort of comply with Medicare and the uh, insurance companies. Maybe it's the blame lies on both of them. I don't know. And that, that pertains to my question to you. I know there's, I know the dental industry wants a fortune for something really that costs them a, a, it's a drop in a bucket probably to them. But then again, an insurance company and Medicare is not gonna just hand over any old fee to the medical industry. I you wasn't know? aware that Medicare had anything to do with dental. No, they won't. They don't. Okay. They won't. They probably feel that, you know, hey man, uh, eat baby food for the rest of your life. Yeah. You well, know, they the, don't cover eyes either, you know. No, no, no. The glasses. And, and, the, and the best dental insurance, they'll cover 80% of your general dentistry. Uh, um, bridges, oh, here's a kicker. Medicare and dental insurance, de health insurance companies will only pay for a partial bridge 
if it involves like eight teeth or more. So you got You have to be a real gummer to get them to pay for a freaking partial and bridge. So, so to me, this is all part of a profit-oriented healthcare industry, which Republicans love. I, you know, a privatized, uh, greedy, greed-based, profit-making healthcare industry. Because if you had the single payer universal health care, everyone will be taken care of as a whole. You know, not just, okay, we'll, we'll pay for some things, but if you have other problems, we won't pay for that. You know, and uh, really, shame on all of you, actually, because dental industry probably doesn't want to meet them halfway, the insurance companies. Insurance companies don't want to be a sucker and hand over thousands of dollars for a friggin' stainless steel screw and a polymer tooth. So it's sort of the both of them. I take it. I don't know. I'm not an insurance expert and I'm not a dentist, but I do know common sense. And um, I think the fault probably lies in both of them. Now, as far as Social Security, disability, and unemployment, and the state, and welfare, and cash assistance, and SNAP, we've talked about in the past how state and federal governments love to throw roadblocks in front of people who are low income or poor and apply for help. Now, I happened to, I did an interview with a medical doctor in, uh, uh, um, that has is award-winning and um, he's been uh, he's an older gentleman he's a, a doctor of internal medicine and I read the form that Social Security Disability Social Security Administration expects the physician to fill out to, to send back to them if you have additional doctors to vouch for you, if you apply for Social Security Disability, let me tell you something. This form is so long and tedious and ridiculous with their questions. It is obvious to me and to the physician, it's a, it's a roadblock purposely thrown in front of applicants, claimants by the government. My God, how long can a person can the claimant sit for how many hours how much how can the can the claimant twist to the left twist to the right how much weight can the claimant lift how long can the claimant hold that amount of weight you know you you you, you, you do you know you 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 uh, you shake it to the left you shake it to the right do the hokey pokey and spin yourself around I mean come on it's the old trick long a lot of questions bill tons of tedious questions he says i don't have time to fill this out and most doctors don't and he this man is very busy mm -hmm. very Why? busy because the social security administration understands that one third of all people who apply put the roadblocks in front of them they won't be back because the first time you apply they deny you that's correct as a policy. as a default as a, and now does that sound ethical and honest and fair hell no hell no it's not I mean even like welfare hey giving people hundred forty dollars a month cash assistance is definitely not ethical and fair in 2016 you know not but if they want to make the people be able to get off of welfare well they, they it's road they're roadblocks you know they're roadblocks now you know, um, it, of course, the um, the government's state and federal government's idea of how the United States economy and job market is is a lot different from reality. <laughs> Just like the unemployment percentages they give you is not reality. Um, well, it's only since Mister. Bill Clinton and Newt Gingrich. That's right. That 
uh, welfare has anything to do with jobs? Well, the job, okay. the job training program in New Jersey, they'll give you no more than four thousand dollars, up to four thousand dollars. Now, this is a limitation of what you can go to school for. But even if the job is supposedly in demand, quote unquote, who's to say it will be in demand when you graduate? Who's to say if the industry is not bringing in H-1B uh, applicants from other countries to work cheaper? Who's to say the companies are not outsourcing your, your newfound career? And um, who's to say, and here, here's the magic question, who's to say that these companies in your local area after you graduate will refuse to hire entry-level people fresh out of school. Many won't. They want experience and they want the training. Now, how do you get experience without a job? How do you get a job without experience? It's like the old commercial with that, the, uh, that guy on the, when I was a kid. You know, it's like, uh, what, they, what would they call that, Catch-22? Yeah, it's a Catch-22. You need experience to get the job, but you need the job to get experience. But if you go into debt with student loan to get the training, now you're you owe all that money, you know. And by the way, Hillary wants students to pay out of pocket for the education. Uh, okay, how do you get the job if nobody wants to hire entry level people? How do you get the job to pay off the student loan and to survive? So you're like, like my sister says, with the way things are today, I would not, I repeat, I would not go into debt with a student loan to go back to school. It's, it's, it, you're going to be in deep debt and you won't be able to pay it back and you're lucky if you do get hired because they won't hire entry level because all the power has been given to the companies, the corporations. They're deregulated. They could fire you for any reason. They could, uh, they could uh, be nitpicky. They, everybody wants five years experience in our area. Five years experience plus and the certificate or the diploma or degree. Now, some customer service jobs that are not outsourced yet, they have the nerve to want people with bachelor's degrees for what? A lousy $11 an hour or $10 an hour for, for a customer service job? Are you out of your fucking minds? That, you know, it's like the more I see capitalism the way the right wing wants it, the more I despise it. There's nothing good about it. It brings nothing to the table, including what Hillary Clinton wants. It brings nothing to the table for poor people, low-income people, or the middle class. Absolutely nothing to the table at all. And uh, the problem is that, okay, we need the regulations back. We need, you know, the rules. Pe and people have to be held accountable for their actions like the old days. But we also need to take away the tax vacation from the rich. And that's it. I mean, um, um, any, any take on what I just said? Well, if, uh, you sort of went off the tangent there. I wanted to say that when you're on welfare, they want you to work. Okay? This was never a requirement before Bill Clinton and Newt Gingrich in 1996, where they changed welfare as we know it. Now, if you're complaining about a regular person needing to go out there and get the job and et cetera, et cetera where are we finding these jobs for people on welfare? It's hard, it's hard enough to find jobs for people just, a, just on unemployment. Who want the jobs? Who, you know, who are, they're really, really gung-ho who need the jobs and who want them. There's probably, or will be very soon, 113 million people in the United States 
who want jobs and can't find them. Wow. That's over one third of the population. Wow. You hear that, folks? It's, uh, you know, uh, uh, to 330 million people in the United States. It's over one third. So, you know, I mean, uh, how can you ask somebody to get a job when there ain't no jobs? Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's yeah, wait, you got to get a job uh, or we're going to take away your stipend. And, and, your peop monthly stipend. and people, I'm warning you, people that are collecting SSI or Social Security Disability, do not, do not get involved with a government program called Ticket to Work and Self-Sufficiency Program. It's a trick. They tell you that if you work part-time, it will not affect your monthly checks. It's a lie. They'll throw you off of Social Security, Disability, and SSI. Yeah, once you show yeah. the, the kid of law, the kid of law says once you can work, you are no longer disabled. Whether you whether, don't have two arms or two legs, you know, you, and you get a job at second base uh, for the Yankees, you're still disabled. Or, or you're like that, that toy bird that dips its head in the water and bobs up and down, and you could type with your nose, <laughs> and you have no arms, and you could type with your nose, like like a woodpecker. Look, ba 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 hundred words a minute. What you know? They won't. They don't consider you disabled anymore and there goes your check there's a lady and a, a kid on a commercial for the Shriners and the kid has no arms and the mother has no arms and of course he does everything with his feet and she does everything I guess, with his feet. I guess they can't use arm and hammer products sir <laughs> All right. but the, uh, to, to those stupid people and and uh, I think it's uh, Chief Justice Roberts on the Supreme Court. If you can brush your teeth, you're not the same. You know, these, these uh, handicapped, these disabled people that joined the Special Olympics and are so proud of, it, of winning a medal, silver, silver medal, bronze medal, gold medal, and they're out there competing. Just wait until the federal government sees you on video in the Special Olympics. Say goodbye to your social security check every month. Say goodbye to it. You know, oh, you're proud. Huh? You got self-esteem. Oh, yeah. Oh, your confidence is back. I'm happy for you. Guess what? You got no money now. Your income is gone. Yeah. Aha. Want to be a smart ass, right? You want to you appease right-wing Republicans and be self-sufficient. Uh, like that time Mel T on Seinfeld, Mel Torme told uh, Kramer when he thought Kramer was uh, mentally challenged, man. He, Kramer was really full of Novocaine. <laughs> oh, you live alone? Oh, you're independent. That's good. Of course that's good. So rich bastards like Mel Torme, I know he's dead, you know, don't have to pay any taxes to help the, the poor. Well, that's what it's all about. That's what they mean when they say smaller government. Look. If you're multi-millionaire or multi-billionaire, even if you paid the old-fashioned 90% tax rate, you will still be rich, living high on a hog. You won't give up your filet mignon and rock lobster tail. You won't give up your mansion. Don't worry. But no, it's a, it's not good enough for them because they have they waged war against the poor. Yeah, but if the poor stay something. Uh, uh, in contrast to that, they say that you, you are uh, waging the war. Hey, you you know, are doing yeah, it. Yeah, they put it on you. Right. You know, I like that banner that uh, Sash Boyle uh, posted where it says, uh, Republicans, they're, they're for war, they're for uh, executing people, they're for uh, um, uh, death penalty, they're uh, send your kids to battle, blah 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 blah. But, but they call themselves pro life, and I says, Yeah, they're pro life until the baby is born, then the baby becomes a moocher. There you go. <laughs> that was cute. I just, I, I, it, it's true. I remember what you That's tell me. Absolutely true. You're in the womb, 
You're valuable as all hell to, to oh, Republicans. That fetus, man. They love you. They love that embryo, that fertile, oh, yeah. fertilized egg, the embryo, the fetus. As soon as you're born, you're a moocher. That's right. <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's funny, but it's let's true. Face, uh, let's face the biological fact. If all mothers were right-wing Republicans, no baby would ever be born. Because here she is, the kid comes out, He's sucking tit for how many years? He's he's he, he he's got no independence whatsoever. She's got to take care of him. She's, she's got to wipe his ass. She's got to you know no, take not. care of his diaper. No, and no, all this the shit. rich Republican uh, woman never, won't do that. Never. The nanny will nurse the baby. That's what they did in the old the days. The nanny. The wet nurse. <laughs> the wet nurse. The wet nurse. That's a funny word. Funny name, right? The the wet nurse Came and the nanny the will kid. wipe it, the clean the baby's diaper. You think the rich Republican woman is going to do that? Hell no. No, it's all the lactation is going to come from another woman. That, uh, they got all hired help. Yep. I was in a mansion one time in my life. You know the woman did not cook at all. Maybe. She had some, uh, uh, a couple Latin people, uh, mm -hmm. a woman in the kitchen saying, what would you like? She, she was doing all the cooking, all the preparation. I mean, what did she have the poor woman do? Wipe her ass? These people... And then the same people that do nothing and hire and and hire immigrants and pay them shit to do everything for them, these are the people that say that mainstream is using their natural resources. The riches of the earth are being used up by by the little guy. Meanwhile, they're the biggest parasites of the world. lazy moose. They're the biggest parasites of all. Yes. And of course, welfare, subsidies, uh, you know, bailouts for the rich. They don't look at that. Welfare. Oh no, they look at whatever is involved with helping the little guy. That's correct. And the poor, people in need. Now, before we begin, because I think we're doing good on time. Let me check. Let me check, man. Yes, we are. I hear, through the grapevine, um, through the uh, oyster shell or whatever, mm -hmm. I hear that uh, Donald Trump is seriously considering uh, choosing Newt Gingrich as his vice presidential running mate. The Gingrich that stole Christmas. Too early for that shit. It's too early. You see for what that. happened to Ted Cruz? Well, you got. Well, he wants to give Chris Christie definitely a job. Transition. In his cabinet. Yeah. But. Transition. We don't know who's going to be his VP, but it's he's he's a he, he's a candidate. Let's put it that way. Trump Trumpy hasn't made his decision yet, but if he picks Newt Gingrich, then let me tell you something. Even if Donald Trump was the only candidate, and everybody else quit and retired. And it was the only, and there's nobody to run against him. I still wouldn't vote for Trump if he picked, because he picked Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich is a crook. He's a crook, and he's he he's the one in cahoots with Bill Clinton That's cool. that they did away with Glass Steagall and gutted out welfare as we know it today. Newt Gingrich, the Gingrich that stole Christmas. Yeah. All right, now let us sink our teeth. Unless you have something else to say. Uh, sink our teeth into these readings. For lunch, I have mozzarella sticks and tree nuts. Not ground nuts, not bush nuts, but tree nuts. Almonds and walnuts and dried dates. Cool. Good goobly goo. Oh, before you start, I want to say thank you. Thank you and give greeting greetings to uh, Lisa Cohen, uh, uh, Rockstar Women with MS uh, for having me as a guest for the second time on your show. It was a pleasure and I believe there's one more show we're going to do and I enjoyed it and it will be up on the internet along with part one. So thank you, Lisa Cohen. A shout out to Lisa Cohen. Back when Donald Trump's love life was tabloid heaven, a Trump spokesman with intimate knowledge of the businessman's personal relationships so look at his wife <laughs> offered juicy stories about a failing marriage 
a new live-in paramour, and three other girlfriends he was juggling at once. Yeah, I heard I heard Ivana said he was impotent. Well, this is what they, this is when he was with Marla. Marla Maples. Yeah. Right. The spokesman identified himself as John Miller. Right. But the Washington Post says it was actually Donald Trump. Donald posing Trump. as yeah. his own publicist. Donald Trump is a a, a tremendous self-promoter. And he was on the phone with a reporter who wondered why Miller's voice sounded so familiar. <laughs> so funny. Oh, it's, this is too funny, man. The Post Ugh. has unearthed a recording of that 1991 phone call. The voice on the phone describes Trump as irresistible to women. In in Trump's uh, delusional mind, maybe? He gets called by everybody in the book. Maybe gold. In terms of women. Maybe because he, because they're, they're, they're gold diggers. And he's Donald Trump. He's got a whole open field. Really. Any, any billionaire has a whole open field. On NBC's Today Show, on Friday, Trump denied being the voice on the phone. Yeah, of course. I don't know anything about it, he said. <laughs> but he owned up to it at the time. Describing the Miller call as a joke gone awry. Oh, boy. Trump also testified in a 1990 court case that he occasionally used the name John Miller and disclosed that his favorite alias was John Barron. No, Barron's a more impressive name. In the call with People Magazine, reporter Sue Carswell, the spokesman said actresses just call to see if they can go out with him. He said Madonna wanted to go out with him. Madonna, doesn't she have her own money? Doesn't she have enough? And came in a beautiful gown and combat boots to hang out with Trump at the Plaza Hotel. I think Madonna just wants to be in, uh, in the spotlight again. You know, she's older now. Again, this is back in the 90s. Well, she was, she, she was like... She not, was hot in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. She was hot okay. in the 80s. Yeah. Just like, like Debbie Gibson had her time and then she fizzled out. You know, otherwise she was like talked about every day. Same thing with Britney Spears. Yeah, so in the 90s she was like semi-retired, so to speak, from showbiz. No, she was, she was still hot. Because she, was she, had still, all them, she had all of them albums in the 80s. All together uh, at the Trump Plaza Hotel, which he owned. He's got zero interest that night, said the man known as Miller. Yeah. Apparently, meaning they did not have sex. You know, these um, these women, these gold diggers, they will look down upon and treat prostitutes like they were trash and vermin but they themselves the gold digger is a form of prostitute Trump's marriage to Ivana Trump was ending that year and he was with Marla Maples who would become his second wife he was also seeing three other women said the spokesman including model Carla Bruni. Well, if he's not married, he... he uh, I'm what sure... he's not married? He's with Ivana. And no, he's ma uh, no, making, making it with... All the time. Well, that's what the man said. We don't know if that's true. No. This is just John Miller 
his publicist, fake publicist, saying yeah. this. Carswell, now at Vanity Fair, told the Post she played the recording to Marla Maples, who confirmed the call was from Trump himself, and cried upon hearing him say that a ring he had given her was not meant to imply an engagement, although their engagement was unannounced weeks later. Was announced. Mm. Carswell says Maples persuaded Trump to invite her out with the two of them to make up for the trickery. A Trump supporter in Congress, GOP Representative Duncan Hunter of California, said... Duncan Hines? What happened back then has no bearing on who he is today. Uh. So does that mean that um, they took him out of context? No. Uh, so <laughs> if, if 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 what happened back then has no bearing on him today, does that mean that his business deal deals back then too mean nothing today? No. They just cherry pick uh, what they want to use uh, from Trump's past. I see. And and leave the the undesirables alone. I see. Just like uh, Republicans cherry pick the Bible. I see. Hypocrisy among the right wing is not uh, a rarity. It is it is uh, a hallmark yes, it's of an being all -time thing. a right winger. Yeah. Or a um, a sellout corporatist uh, Democrat, which I call democrats. Hypocrisy, you know. <clears throat> As we speak. The monarch butterfly is enduring oh, its perilous journey northward. Yeah, they, they may somewhere in, in Mexico. They hi, they, uh, that is their winter retreat and the reproduction takes place in the same region of Mexico. It's amazing. Sadly, in just the past few years, we have seen the monarch numbers drop to a 20-year low. Because of man, man's uh, intervention, humankind. Although there are multiple reasons why this magnificent butterfly is threatened, there are two main ones. First is the lack of milkweed, the only plant that monarch caterpillars can consume. And milkweed happens to be the, the wild dandelion, I think. And the latest study also points to the lack of available wildflower habitat. I could be wrong. You know what? Don't quote me on that milkweed statement. Especially for their journey southward in late summer. The good news is that conservation organizations government agencies and local communities have been getting more milkweed into our environment. Well, thanks to all these um, show-off assholes that have to have a, a, a beautiful, perfect golf course lawn and put down all those uh, Monsanto pesticides and herbicides, whatever, ground up, the milkweed uh, is not there for the monarch butterflies. But there is still much more for us to do, especially in our own backyards. My lawn is organic. I do not kill anything that feels like coming up. This spring, dig under some of that useless lawn Remove non-native plants. Make room in your flower beds for milkweed. And purslane, by the way. And native wildflower nectar sources. Oh yeah, that'll help the bees quite a bit, wildflowers. Many garden centers now carry multiple species of milkweed, which will work in the backyard. Unlike many environmental issues that seem overwhelming, 
this is one we can do something about. Listen, just sacrifice the golf course where you live on your property and think of um, think of the God's creatures. Think, think of saving the bees and saving the monarch butterflies and so on and so forth. You know, forget about having a freaking perfect golf course in front of your house or in the back or both. We don't need to write to any elected official. All we have to do is plant some milkweed and other native wildflowers. That's right. Echinacea is an, another beautiful and med very medicinal native wildflower. It's called purple coneflower. Echinacea, you know all about that. Together we can turn our local communities into environments that are welcoming to the monarch butterfly. And that letter was from Don Torino, the president of the Bergen County Audubon Society. Oh, the Audubon Society cares about butterflies too. Oh, you reckon, so? reckon so? Not just boids, birds. I reckon so. You know, um, that's a great reading, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's a lesson to be learned about, you know, what do you, what do you prior, prioritize more? Having people go, oh my God, what a beautiful, lush, perfectly golf course lawn you have. <laughs> or just having your property help to bring back endangered species that are important like our pollinators and the monarch butterfly. Researchers have concluded that the practice of parents spanking children is overwhelmingly detrimental to children. No, it's not. There's nothing like an old-fashioned bada-bing knuckles across the chops. Richard, researchers from the University of Texas kicking the ass too and the University of Michigan carried out a meta-analysis of 50 years of studies into the practice, which they defined as an open-handed hit on the behind or extremities. It's not going to work if it's a baby with di uh, a, um, a kid that still wears diapers, because mothers give love taps. Remember that. Researchers noted that many people do not view spanking as abuse and that it is a common practice worldwide. You could take their allowance away, you could remove their video game from their bedroom and disconnect their TV and, and computer. You know, you, you, could, you could like, you know, hurt them that way. With as many as 80% of parents worldwide partaking in spanking as a form of discipline. However, the research which compiled data of 160,000 children found the practice of spanking to be overwhelmingly negative, putting children at risk for serious outcomes including aggression, antisocial behavior, impaired cognitive ability and low self-esteem among others. Get that protester out of here. I'll punch him in the face. Get rid of him. Get rid of that protester. I'm gonna build a wonderful wall. They also found that the more often a child was spanked, the more likely these outcomes were and that these negative effects effects on children were similar to those of abuse, though to a lesser degree. But how do you control monsters that take uh, tantrums in a, in, a, in, a, in a public place? I mean, how do you, what do you do? Just pepper mace them or something? Or uh, use chloroform, knock them out? Or, I mean, well, you know, it all depends on how old they are. Because if you miss the domesticated period when you could have controlled them and taught them properly. You missed it. 
and other, you will not have it again. In other words, and these will turn will grow up to be brats. Yeah. In other and words, sickable human. In other words, it's like having a puppy. Let's say you have a puppy of a, a breed that's considered tough. Let's say you have a Rottweiler puppy or a, a pit bull terrier puppy or whatever German Shepherd. If you don't, if you don't show that you're the alpha and lay the rules down when they're pups, and then they they when they it, then when they get older they they'll be like um, they will be the alpha. like social like sociopaths. They yes. will have difficulty distinguishing right from wrong. Yeah. They will not recognize that what they're doing is wrong. They will feel no remorse for being, you know, like gremlins who eat after midnight. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. As a first generation college graduate, 24 year old Sierra Young has wondered whether her bachelor's degree gives her an edge or puts her at a disadvantage yeah. when she considers that she has no savings, the, 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 the student, no car, the student loan, sure. and is obligated to repay student debt while trying to get a foothold in the job sector. And guess who wants her to pay off that student debt? Hillary Robham Clinton. Sometimes I wonder what all these sacrifices are for. She said. You sucker. I'm not trying to drive a Bentley. I just want to feel every day that I can breathe with ease. She wants a life. She wants a life. That I can take care of my bills. Yeah. And when I have kids, ensure that I leave them better off than when I started. That's not happening. Not in this day and age. There should be progress. And yeah. it's just kind of scary that things could be going backwards. After graduating from Pittsburgh's Chatham University in 2014, with a major in cultural studies and a minor in film, Young, a native of Columbus, Ohio, was he remained in Pittsburgh, who has remained in Pittsburgh served one year in the volunteer service program, AmeriCorps. She is working at the Women and Girls Foundation as a Coral Fellow in Public Affairs, which is a nine-month program that pays a monthly stipend of $1,300. She joined the fight for $15 minimum wage movement because she is worried about how the rising cost of living will affect her if she is unable to find employment or earn enough to sustain a middle-class lifestyle. I mean, $15 an hour is about survival. It's not about living high on the uh, hog. Republicans will make it sound like, oh, you're, we're being too, too generous with people. It's a job killer. It's a job killer. Yeah. Hey. H-1B uh, 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 immigrant, H-1B uh, hiring and uh, outsourcing are job killers. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, not outs. I'm talking about United States job killers. Yeah. You know. Although Young is still at the gar starting gate of her career, she is feeling some of the same anxiety shared by people more than twice her age who are worried even terrified that the rising cost of living will sabotage their retirement plans. Of course. According to a new study on Americans' perception about inflation by Minneapolis-based Alliance Life Insurance Company of North America, nearly half, 47% of Americans report being very concerned about the rising cost of living. And 11% said they were terrified that they won't be able to pay for essential needs because of the rising cost of living. The concern was even greater among households with lower earnings, less than $50,000 a year. 
with 65% noting they are worried or panicked. This study highlights the potential psychological and fiscal impact of inflation on a person's financial strategy. As consumers move into retirement, they will not only need to consider how to make their income last for 30 years or more, but also how it can cover rising costs driven by inflation. I think Americans are smart to be worried about the effect inflation will have on their retirement. But many people are estimating future inflation rates to be higher than the historical average. While the 20-year-old average inflation rate runs about 2.2 percent, survey respondents were predicting it will run between 3 percent and 10 percent each year during their retirement. Some of the anxiety may stem from the fact that the Social Security Administration has announced that it will not provide a cost of living adjustment in 2016. Longer average life spans, oh by the way, supposedly there are bills in the House and the Senate to increase Social Security payments by $70. We'll see if they get through. Look at all the years there has not been any That's correct. increases in Social Security. Uh, but, but the Congress and the Senate sure got a raise. Yes, they did. Every year Every automatically. Year got automatic raises because they don't want you to say no to their raises, so they do it automatically. Yeah. The, the, they, they never consider the cost of living uh, increases for Social Security yeah. benefits. They don't consider a cost of living at all. No. And, and the CPI that they use to calculate all this stuff, they don't include food and energy. Isn't that something? Those are the two drivers of inflation. Well, they don't want to include of course. food and energy. What's the matter with you? Just like have we, to pay. Just like we were saying the other day about Republican uh, Governor of Wisconsin, Scott Walker, wanting to give uh, um, uh, un uh, unemployed people collecting unemployment, he wants to give them drug tests. First of all, it's not his money to withhold from people. People paid into it, just like they pay into Social Security. It's not his money to withhold, you know, or steal. Uh -huh. Longer average lifespans and rising health care costs could cause more retirees to outlive their savings. Mm, that will happen. Fidelity Investments estimates couples who retired at age 65 will spend $245,000 on health care during their retirement. That assumes that a man will live to be 85 and a woman 87. Bud Kahn, president and founder of Wealth Management Strategies, in suburban Pittsburgh said, the worry that many Americans have concerning slow wage growth and the rising cost of living is warranted because of the trade-offs people are forced to make. Do they save for retirement or do they pay their deductible on high deductible health care plans? He said, what will families need to sacrifice to educate their children. People are doing the best they can. They are working through a very difficult situation. Well, senior citizens without a doubt are living longer today. I mean, I mean, look, they join gymnasiums and health clubs, they work out. Their, their knowledge of nutrition is a lot 
better than it, than it was. I mean, I mean, people are going to vitamin stores and seniors are buying all kinds of supplements. So yes, you know, you know, antioxidants as well, uh, better multivitamins. Uh, they're taking their minerals. They're taking herbal extracts. Mm -hmm. So I could see, excuse me, I could see definitely that seniors will outlive their savings, mm -hmm. without a doubt. You know, if they have any savings, if they have any savings, with because with, in America is one is is the least saving country in the world. Well, they can't because the 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 the, the cost of living is just uh, everything. Not making it up. Everything is price gouged. Even look, even um, uh, like the cost of rents and. Um, 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 the cost of groceries, um, most of which is, is toxic crap anyway, American supermarkets. And the cost of everything, and the cost of living in general, is price gouged. Mm -hmm. You know, but, um, but anyway, uh, let us break for lunch, and you'll be joined by our voiceover artist, William Hamilton Morrow III. Um, for promo and commercial. Now uh, I was, I was asked, why don't we present this show in parts? Because our show is very long. I said, well, it didn't really do us any good to break it in parts. It didn't make any difference. Right. And so, uh, I says, just pause or stop the the video where you left off and come back. Come back later. Hey, no. and just come back later and, and finish it. It's the same thing. If parts one through five add up to the time of this whole show, then what's the difference? If I'm watching a movie on a computer, right, and I have to go take a pee or something, I pause it and come back. Right. Bingo! I mean, you're in, huh? And if you have to, if you have to leave the house, you log off and you 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 go back to where you left off. Jeez. It's the same amount of time. You know, it's like somebody telling me, um, "Oh, oh, it's been proven in retail that the uh, pricing something uh, for like uh, six ninety nine sells better than pricing it for seven dollars. That's why you never see seven dollars. One lousy penny. Do you think?" Uh, In the scheme of things, you think people care about one lousy penny? Well, I got news for you. They're gonna, you're going to see a lot of seven dollars from now on because they're going to stop making the penny. Oh, it costs too much well, to penny, make the penny. First of all, mm -hmm. copper is too valuable mm -hmm. of a, of an alloy yes. to be wasting on the cockroach of money. In my opinion, pennies are the cockroach of money. Oh. They're annoying. They're a nuisance. Well, then we, 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 we're we going to be getting rid of them, and we won't have to uh, make that divisive, divisible with yeah. pennies anymore. Now, um... You know what I mean? Now, um, as far as who's, who, whose face, whose mug is going to be on our money, I'm waiting for a Native American hero to appear. You can oh. keep waiting, pal. But they, they put Tubman on the... They're gonna put Tubman on the twenty dollar bill. What's her name? Yeah, uh, Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. Yeah. Who? You know. I mean, she looks like Aunt Esther from Sanford and Son. Mm -hmm. She's not a looker, but she she did a tremendous amount mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. uh, African Americans. But 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 come on, the people that that were the genocide of the Native Americans who originally owns this land who had everything stolen from them, everything, and, and, and deliberately killed off and, and stuffed into reservations. How, do, how are we honoring them? There's no Indian, you know, there used to be a Buffalo Nickel, an Indian Head Penny. I mean, put Geronimo, I'm sorry, Sitting Bull, put Sitting Bull, who beat the U.S. Army, at the Battle of Little Bighorn, put him on a bill and take one of those rich plantation, slave-owning founding fathers off 
one of the bills and have Sitting Bull uh, appear on there and have Harriet Tubman appear on the 20. You know, all those founding fathers, they, they were, they weren't, they were, in those days, they were similar to the corporations today, right? They were not, they were not part of mainstream. Well. They had money and they, own. yeah. Is anyone home? We're doing the show right now. Hold on, please. Uh, Oh, we're gonna we're gonna go off for lunch. I'll be right with you. Hold on. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll join you uh, when we get back. Okay. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay. We're back. We're back from lunch. And we had a visitor. We had a visitor. Oh, this is progressive discussion. Please excuse the construction sounds in the background. We had a visitor, as you heard, before we broke for lunch. The visitor happened to be a very nice young man doing volunteer work for Bernie Sanders here in New Jersey. Promoting Bernie Sanders for the New Jersey primary upcoming. June 7th. Small world. June the 7th? June 7th. I had a nice long conversation with him and I uh, gave him our web links and um, I will be seeing him online. I believe his name was Jason. Jason. I hope I got the name right. I'm usually not good with names. Except with people I deal with all the time. And then you change the name. Like Debbie Wasserman. Deborah Wasser cunt shits. Well, you know, when Jesse Ventura was a, a heel wrestler, he was a bad guy in pro wrestling, he used to change people's names that he had no respect for. Oh. Call everybody Jack. like. Instead of Pat Patterson, he called him Jack Patterson. 
instead of um, Tito Santana, he called he called him Chico Santana. You know, he would change the <coughs> change the names. You know, to get under the skin. Uh-huh. <coughs> anyway, let us get back to the show. Very unpredictable, this show. Very unpredictable. Uh, it's uncensored and it's very grassroots revolution looking. As you can see, our studio, it's not a high-tech studio with a lot of money poured into it like uh, Saint does over on the Young Turks. Or Fox News. The Young Toys. And tell lies. Or Fox All News. All that technology just to tell lies. All that technology just to tell lies. No, no, Sank is cool. He's a progressive warrior. I'm not criticizing Sank. I'm just saying is it's very grassroots here at Progressive Discussions, as you can see. And then I don't know if you can see it really, but we got the Bernie. Is he still up there? The Bernie bird is up here, the blue bird. I don't even know if you can see it. But anyway, all right. Seven all right. bells, seven bells to begin the second half and the conclusion of our show. Go ahead. I saw the picture of the Goose family with Goslings going for a Mother's Day stroll on the Hudson River walkway in Edgewater. I see geese all the time. This family may not make it to Father's Day. <laughs> Why, they're going to end up being a roasted goose? Close. This beautiful family of geese is in the crosshairs of the Edgewater mayor and council, which have agreed to gas the geese to death. Gas the geese? Why, are the geese really bothering him that much? Once the geese molt, some will be rounded up and forced into a gas chamber. Gee, nice, where nice. they will suffocate and die. Does this, does this, does this same mayor, was it Edgewater? Does this same mayor, mayor of Edgewater, New Jersey, would he do that to homeless people in Edgewater? Hey. That might be next. This is disgraceful and inhumane. What's worse, it is not totally necessary. It's not necessary. Just like that, that, that horrible sound you hear in the background. I don't even know what the hell that is. Holy crap. In the words of Peter Boyle, God rest his soul. Holy there crap. are non-lethal ways and methods that work. Yeah, yeah uh, there are humane ways to capture them all and transport them, yes. Including habitat modification, fencing and shrubs by the water, taller and different types of grasses, inclu including fescue. I hope it stops soon. Enforcing feeding bans and chasing with dogs. This show is totally unplanned. Well, it's planned. I mean, unscripted. Anything could happen. You know what I mean? Especially all natural. All, all natural, like, you know. Not any the sound door, the windows open. Soundproof. With a, uh, no, no, no. Not a soundproof studio. studio. Fresh air coming in, real sunlight coming in. All natural, you know. Grassroots. These, I, right now we're getting crab grassroots. These methods are being used successfully in other places, including Tenafly, New Jersey, and Bloomingdale. Oh God, son of a bitch. Yeah. I have personally witnessed mass amounts of illegal feeding and no habitat modification in Edgewater. 
signs are finally starting to be put up, but feeding bans need to be enforced for them to be effective. Like many others, the geese in the picture deserve to live their lives in peace. It's not necessary to do that. It is not too late <laughs> for Edgewater to cancel its plans. You think Pete is going to get involved? <clears throat> I hope so. I don't know. I mean, I know the, the Canadian geese and the mallard ducks quack, quack, have decided to stay here where we live. They like it. Why they like it that much, I have no idea. Uh, if I was them, I would continue migrating. But they stay. There are some inconveniences about them. They take their sweet ass time to cross Main Street. And if you're, you know, if you're in traffic, you have to wait for them. But and those it's guys, cute. Those guys are big too, those guys down there. Yeah, it's cute down though. They, the way they waddle and the, and the babies follow the mom and the right. father's in front of the mother. And it's like, you know, you know, it's, it, it's nice to see wildlife. But yes, they do take their sweet time like they own the town. <laughs> and that's it. But, I, I, you know, they should put up a sign that says Gro Goose Crossing. Goose Crossing, there you go. Okay. All right. A letter writer, after castigating Christine Todd Whitman and the political elites for not supporting Donald Trump, concludes that he supports Trump because... He is a hard-working individual who has provided for his children and taught them family values. But who, who is this wonderful dad? Well, I don't know. Oh. Good. Not a word about Trump's tax proposals. That Fortune magazine, not a liberal magazine, has said would tack on Ten trillion dollars to America's debts, debt, or his proposal to greatly reduce the tax burden of millionaires. No mention of Trump's proposal to negotiate the country's debt with creditors, thus undermining the very foundation of this country's economic strength, established more than 200 years ago by Alexander Hamilton which assured creditors that this country stands behind its debt obligations. Yeah, the, the president who foolishly got into a duel with, was it Aaron Burke? President? He was never president. Alexander Hamilton? Yeah. You said Alexander Hamilton? Yeah. He was never president. He was never president of the United he States? He was the uh, Secretary of the Treasury. Okay? He handled all the finances of the United States of America. Oh. Uh, it was uh, instrumental in getting the Bank of the United States, the first one, etc. Is he on the $10 bill? Uh, I think he is. Or is that Jackson? I don't know. No, Jackson was... Uh, I don't well, have too many Jackson was booted off the 20 I don't have too many $10 bills. Okay. For Tubman. <laughs> Tub, a tub of 20s. Nor was there recognition of Trump's... There's a new uh, there's a Broadway show right, right out now, uh, Hamilton. On Hamilton. You can make a Broadway show about any damn thing. About tree frogs. Uh, nor was there recognition of Trump's proposal to engage in economic warfare with China, Mexico, and other trading nations that would endanger the sustainability of our country's exports. Hey, Sylvester Stallone's Rocky Broadway show didn't last that long. <laughs> and the job losses that would result. And no mention of Trump's proposal to leave NATO, the bulwark of our foreign policy to support democracy in a Europe that has seen two wars, and that is also our front line against Russian aggression. Russian aggression? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's always Russian aggression, right? And of course, there is the wall that can be climbed over, dug under, flown over, and sailed around that apparently will be built. Scary. And it'll be wonderful, too. Trump's Taj Mahal. <laughs> In a recent television interview, Donald Trump revealed the linchpin of his foreign policy. I believe in world peace, Trump said. <laughs> Perhaps channeling one of the contestants in his Miss Universe pageant. This bold pronouncement could rival the Monroe Doctrine in its historical significance. Hey man, a new car dealer could say, I promise you, I guarantee you, the lowest retail selling price on your vehicle. You can trust me. I'm Harry Honeycutt. <laughs> they yeah. now have a new app which will tell you the price of any oh, car. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen that commercial. Dealers yeah, the don't, area. dealers hate it. Former Republican Governor Christine Todd Whitman has morphed from a rhino, a Republican in name only, to a principled conservative in her misguided attacks on Donald Trump. She's the one that tried to privatize the division of uh, motor vehicles, and it was a fiasco and it didn't fly. Yeah, well, it's uh, semi-private now, right now. Oh, it is? Yeah. Well, I guess thanks As to her. As is the New Jersey Lottery, and anything else Christy can sell. Wait a minute, if the New Jersey Lottery is partially privatized, then how is a person, how can a person be assured of receiving their winnings uh, in a timely fashion? Who knows? I hope they don't screw the winners. Who knows what would happen, you know, when, uh, when it is privatized. I mean, anything else, like water, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there's always a problem pops up. Always a and problem. And right now, there's been two years, I believe, in the lottery, where they have not come close to their amount that they are supposed to make and then give so much to the state for education purposes. Ha! Huh. Doesn't you know? surprise me. So, you know, privatization has always been problematic. Yes, because people skim off the top, etc., 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 etc. You see what happened during um, the war in Iraq with the privatized uh, supplies for the troops? They didn't get their supplies. She briefly dons these animating principles for a few paragraphs, but then attacks the far right wing as obstructionists to compromise. Well, we have seen what compromise has earned us. The continuance of Obamacare. Foreign policy retreat a gutting of our military, an acquiescence in a series of scandals that would have brought down any Republican president. And, and kicking out former Speaker of the House, John Boehner. Yeah. Giving him the boot. That's, that's from the far right wing. Yes. The people have spoken. It is time for Whitman to join Governor Christie and the rest of us who are, at last, animating the party and bringing in support from all concerned Americans. Oh, like I can, I care about any right-wing conservative. I can care less if the party goes belly up. I am a moderate Republican. A successful businessman and a college graduate. I intend to vote for Donald Trump. Well, because uh, this person doesn't want 
to pay his fair share in taxes. That's what it comes down to because if the rich pay their fair share in taxes um, and uh, you know not put the burden on the middle class, we wouldn't have nearly as many problems as we have today. Well, we would have more money in the in the uh, in a, instead of the deficit. Well, there'll be there'll be. Um, I mean, you know how many trillions the rich owe us for all the tax cuts. Two of them under uh, George W. Yeah. Bush and Clinton. And what about the offshore tax havens? You know, offshore tax havens and. Uh, well, that's yeah. That's money that they ain't you know. even bringing back here. But, but that's only one part of the solution. The second part is keeping the jobs in the United States. That's the second part. Yeah, well. Not, you know, and I don't, I'm not talking about privatized prisons and H-1B. I'm talking about stimulating the economy, which means putting more money back in the pocket of the little guy. $15 an hour minimum wage, maybe? Perhaps. That might help now. Oh, they're making such a big stink about that, huh? Uh -huh. Simply stated, I'm fed up with our past and current administrations. Our leaders say they will bring down the debt and create more jobs. They promise everything and deliver nothing. So don't blame Obama for that. Well, he brought down the deficit by two thirds. For crying yeah, out. it wasn't his fault. He inherited the mess. But don't. For hey, is it true that Obama got the TPP to pass? I don't know if it's true or not, but I saw him signing it uh, yesterday on Facebook. Yeah, and the title said, "Obama is finally a dictator." Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if that's true or not true. Yeah, you got to be careful about many of the uh, articles online. Exactly. They all are a bunch of self-serving individuals who have lied to us year after year. That is very true. Look where we are today. Trillions in debt. Higher than ever at the health care costs. Decreasing middle class out-of-control spending on liberal policies. Yeah, anything that helps the poor and low-income people is a bleeding-heart liberal policy. Yeah. And they, you know, and, and uh, instead of cutting, st instead of starting this, um, to help the deficit by cutting their own bloated salaries and perks and, you know, I mean, uh, freebies and everything, they, they, they ask teachers to take a, a cut, yeah. like what Christie did, Chris exactly. Christie, t asking teachers to make the sacrifice, yeah. but it's never them. No, 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 no. 175,000 plus, not not counting. I perks. think it's 184 now. I think. All right, now it's raise. 184. They got the raise. Yeah. Not Social Security recipients. No. They got the raise. What in Washington? Yeah. And they get the best health care, and they, they even get their, their donuts and pastries and coffee for free on the taxpayer's dole. I bet they eat the best free square meals a day, the best food on the taxpayer's dole. In the, uh, what do you call it, where you go eat? Cafeteria. Cafeteria. Yeah. And I bet there are chefs in that cafeteria. Oh, yeah. And I bet I bet their fam them and their families eat organic food. You know where Jack Pepin used to work? Jack Pepin? Yeah. There? No. Where? Howard Johnson. The orange roof. You mean when Jacques Pepin came to the United States? Well, he was already here, I guess, but that's what, that was one of his jobs. He worked there really? for ten years. Well, what happened to Jacques Pepin being a chef working in a good restaurant or well, that's what I, I don't I don't know what he did there. I, I, I'm sure he wasn't flipping hamburgers. I mean, Jacques Pepin, did he come to the United States as a French chef? Yes. Why the hell did he have to take such a degrading job in IHOP? 
Why couldn't he become I'm sure a chef? You know about great scientists or great uh, writers and because uh, he has an accent and everything have to take menial work. But he's French. To survive. He's French. He's Jacques Pepin. He smells. He can work in any number of 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 classy highfalutin French restaurants. I guess he wasn't as well known then. But he had but he had the skills yeah. to be a French chef. But he could only get a job at Howard Johnson. I just don't <laughs> understand it. All Remember right. that was before the days of uh, of um, the French chef. There were no cooking shows on TV. Well, the, at oh, that time. oh yeah, there there. I don't think there was even uh, the Galloping Gourmet and Julia Child. Julia Child was the first. Well, my fa my two favorites, uh, Justin Wilson, the Cajun cook Justin Wilson, and uh, the guy with the belly sticking out and the red suspenders. Oh, and pardon. Oh, no, you mean Jasper. What? Wasn't it Jasper? Wait, that was his name? I don't know any Jasper. I, I know who Paul Prudhomme is, but he looked like Dom DeLuise. Yes, Paul Prudhomme. Uh, no, no, Justin Wilson looked like Charlie Weaver from yes. the Hollywood Squares. <laughs> And uh, he had red, oh, sus red suspenders, white shirt, and a big belly. And I also liked the original Yan Can Cook with Martin Yan. Yeah, well, and uh, the Galloping Gourmet who was always drinking wine and he was always drunk. So he had his heart attack. Yeah. Uh, but and anyway, yeah, yeah Yan Can Cook would tell jokes and laugh at his own jokes. Very funny. Anyway. I have had enough. And that's why I'm going to vote. We're a non-political person, and that's Donald Trump. Hey, buddy, I got an itch right in the middle of my forehead. Let me scratch it. <laughs> Jerk. He should get the blackthorn shillelagh upside his head. Mm -hmm. Is what he needs. Mm -hmm. All Trump and Hillary supporters should come in contact with my shillelagh. Lovely. And I don't even need the shillelagh. <clears throat> give him the old grade A ham hock. Of course, the chops, man. Of course, the chops. I think we should end with two, uh, Let's forget. a little uh, less blood pressure rising. No, we, we didn't we didn't have that many um, heavy-duty readings. But, all right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Dear Abby. All right. I have been in a relationship with my high school sweetheart for six years. Oh. Oh. He is only the second person I have been intimate with. Ah, so her, but her cherry was popped. I love him. And I'm pretty sure that we will end up marrying. Neither of us has ever cheated. But is she old enough to know what love is? The problem is... I'm having doubts about my lack of experience with other men. Ah... Uh. She wants the sh shillelagh. She wants to get reamed more, huh? Oh, sausage. She wants the old super solder, the old hide the salami. Teresa. <laughs> I'm not saying I want to sleep around with random men. Well, what does she want to do? She wants a sausage. But I would like to experience intimacy with someone else. So I won't wonder what if, when I'm older and married, and am I wrong for this? She's gonna get banged by another dude. Then she's gonna say, you know what? I need a tad bit more experience with intimacy. And then she's gonna bang another dude, and she's gonna say, well, I wonder what a big schlong would feel like. And then she's gonna bang another one, then another one, then another one, then another one. I know what's gonna happen. I'm the wizard. Of the, of the universe, believe me. Go ahead, continue. Here is Abby's answer. I don't think you are wrong. <laughs> but your question does make me wonder whether you are ready to settle down. I wonder, wonder, do, 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 who wrote the book of love. If your sex life 
were as fulfilling as you would like it to be, you wouldn't be asking if you are wrong for wanting more. Yeah. I'm assuming you're catching what he's saying because we got interrupted. The sex story got interrupted by the noise. Level with your boyfriend about your feelings to see if you can work this out. However, she's young, she's young, she don't, they don't really, they're not ready to settle down. If the answer is no, then both of you may want to move on. I agree. They're young, she's having doubts, she wants more experience, her, her, her uh, vaginal uh, t uh, tunnel is not reamed sufficiently enough. I think they should not, they should hold off on getting married. Who wrote the book of love? Grassroots, brother. Grassroots show, progressive discussions. All right? You don't, you don't have a high-tech studio. Grassroots, you pencil neck geeks. Jabronis. Grassroots revolution. You can take that to the bank, stick it in your pipe and smoke it. My wife. Take my wife, please. And I have been married for about a year. Uh, we are both 34 years of age. Oh, really? We live on five acres. Woods surround us on three sides. We have a six foot tall fence. Our nearest neighbors live about a half a mile away. My wife, my wife knew I was a naturalist before we married. Oh yeah. Not a naturalist, a naturist. A naturist. So they could have a, they could have chicken coop. Uh, uh, they can make moonshine in their own still. Wow. Nature is, is a nudist. Not a natural. Oh, a nudist colony. A naturist. You know, I, I, I used to go surf fishing at a nude beach. And what I noticed catch was... Catch anything? Actually, I did a lot of bluefish. But the people... What, are you, what would you used to call it? Uh, Sandy Hook, New Jersey. No, no, no. The, the name for the... The, 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 the dick... I went away, when I was on early uh, online stuff, uh, there was this song that had a whole bunch of different names for it. And there was one with a fish. Well, I stopped. Blowfish? Yeah. I stopped going because it was like nudity was just like these people. No, nobody was getting aroused. You're not supposed to be around with new tea, I thought it? I thought it was going to be like a meat market. People no, were going to be no, picking no, each other up left no, and right no, back no, then. No, 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 no. Nah, it was like nothing no, to these people. No, no. Yeah. I mean, you get more you get more results with from people with clothing on. She dislikes seeing me in the nude. She dislikes it all the time. Oh, 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 she, he's desensitizing her to his nude body. Too much. Overkill. I do my share of the housework and all of the yard work in the nude. I guess that's why their nearest neighbor is far away. When we have people over, I wear clothing. <laughs> we went to a clothing optional resort one time. I was nude the whole time, and she wore shorts. Yeah, you don't want pubic hairs in your and a shirt in your salsa dip for the chips, you know, when you have guests. She refuses to go again. What can I do? Uh, to change my wife's mind about being a nude. If only all of life's problems can be so trivial as these whining babies. You knew that your wife was a fully clothed non-nudist when you married her. 
That's right. So why does she have to change to suit you? Why don't you change? That's right, I agree. Jabroni. I understand that as a nudist, you are attached to your clothing optional way of life. But if there's any activity that I think of as being compatible with wearing clothing, preferably many layers of it, it would be yard work. The website for the Naturist Society, naturistsociety.com, offers this very practical <coughs> and sensitive advice for you. Typically women are more wary than men of clothing optional venues. But everyone, male and female, has body issues. For some, the idea of being seen nude and seeing others nude is filled with psychological tension. A spouse, friend, partner can help reduce the tension, but only if caution and sensitivity are exercised. There is a line between encouragement and coercion. Don't cross it! If you want to introduce someone to nudism. Well, a person, yes, a person does know who they're getting seriously involved with when they date and they make the commitment. They do know them. They shouldn't complain after they get married, you know, and, and expect them to change for you. It sounds kind of selfish. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, it's selfish. Anyway, that's it. That's a wrap. That's a wrap, man. Thank you for joining us for... Yeah, I believe this is part two of the series uh, Progressive Warriors for Bernie Sanders versus Evil. Okay? A grassroots revolution show. Uncensored. Well, you know, Uncensored. Unscripted. Yes? As it stands, with them counting the super delegates, Hillary Clinton has like 2,250, something like that. On a silver platter, Bernie yeah. Bernie has like 1,450, something like that. There are over a thousand delegates left. Take out the super delegates, and Bernie has a chance to win. Well, this, but uh, yeah. why would those super delegates? in the very beginning, promised themselves to Hillary. Without even getting the full gist of Bernie Sanders. Without her winning. They're supposed to declare themselves for the winner. Why would the DNC rig the uh, primaries for Hillary Clinton? Because Be they want Hillary Clinton. Because they want I mean. Hillary Clinton. Uh, maybe there's a, a, a connection between the partiality, the, the biased behavior of the DNC with the Clinton campaign and the superdelegates that have pledged to Hillary. Maybe yeah. there's a, a money trail. If you follow the money trail, maybe there's a money trail involved here. Well, whatever it is, it's, it's way too early. Right. <clears throat> the popular vote, which is the most fair election of all time, uh, is all we should have. Uh, uh, I think the Electoral College and the superdelegate in the Democratic Party, I think these are roadblocks that help the top... Uh, well, that's what they're for. One percent. They're roadblocks. Voter ID, you know, we're, we're coming from Republicans. The voter ID, uh, um, uh, voter suppression, what term are they using now? Voter suppression. Well, the Republicans don't use suppression. That's for sure. Well, I mean, that's what it amounts. To. I mean, throwing roadblocks in front of minorities and the poor. Um, when, when, in in reality, all you have to be is an American citizen, and you should be able to vote in every election. Mm -hmm. You know, you shouldn't be. Uh, now, what, what the gentleman told me, the young man says that uh, the law in New Jersey now is that. 
he was told that an independent can vote yeah, for that. either a Republican or a Democrat. I don't know. All I know is I'm switching back to independent after the New Jersey primary. Um, the old bag uh, at the, uh, the voting uh, hall told me I had to be uh, a Democrat in order to vote in the primary. Well, guess what? I'm dumping the two parties forever after the New Jersey primary. Um, it's obvious with Wasserman Schultz, it's obvious that the DNE, DNC has everything rigged for Hillary. Uh, Bernie seems to be on a roll. He's, uh, he, he, there's a good chance he might take the whole West Coast. There's a, yeah. good, there's a good chance of it. He's strong in California. He's even stronger in Oregon. He won Washington. He won Idaho. Uh, I'm not sure if Nevada switched to Sanders. I hear they did. I don't know. Um, Arizona is pissed off because they got screwed. Sanders got screwed in Arizona. But the point is that there's still a chance, even though the corporate whore media and the Hillary supporters are nagging Bernie Sanders to, get out, get out. to drop out because that's what they want. Yeah, because no, but there's no reason. Because Hillary, <clears throat> either Hillary is that power obsessed. Or Hillary she, did not drop out at this particular time when she was running against Obama. Right. She waited till June. Because Hillary is a one of those rare female birds that happens to be an ego maniacal, very selfish person. And she's either that power hungry, power mad, or she's that well paid off, or both. Um, well, I would call $111 million a year quite a big paycheck. Right. And, and, of, and, uh, and of, of course, the paid, uh, the, the few, few hundred thousand dollars for a speech is, is bribery. It is not a, 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 a pay for speech. Yeah. For a speech. And. Um, you know, this, uh, I, I mean, like I told him about the New York primary, uh, the man from upstate New York was right, that everything north of Westchester County was going for Bernie Sanders, and, and the city, um, they, there was finagling going on. There was uh, uh, some eyewitnesses that said, yes, there was a, a rigged election in New York City. But then again, it happened everywhere else in Arizona how could you close down the polls hours before they're supposed to be closed down they did but they did they did left many people online yeah um, so based on it well based on the popular vote Al Gore did technically defeat GW Bush based on popular vote it was by the count he defeated him Count. George Bush was selected by the Supreme right. Court. Which is like a kangaroo Which court. had nothing to do with the election. Right. They just wanted to stop the count. So they, they deliberately fucked over Al Gore. It says it in the court case. If we allowed this case to go on, it would do, it would do irreparable harm to George W. Bush. Yeah, it would. Who cares? It would show he lost. Who cares? Oh, so so that was a big problem, obviously, to the oligarch. Correct. Just like Bernie Sanders is a, is an even bigger problem. Oh, he's a big one. Is a huge, a huge astronomical problem to the oligarch, and the oligarch wants uh, the corporate whore, uh, Shillery, and Billery, his his uh, his first lady, the cherry nose pervert Billery, Clinton. The oligarch wants them. Yeah, because she's a conservative, actually. Right. She's not. She is not. She's not a progressive. progressive she's not a or liberal. liberal. Not even a Democrat, especially the old kind. No. Well, none it's of them. The really. new, ever since Bill Clinton, they've become corporate whores. Just like I told the young man before. Uh, what's his name? Uh, mayor Bill De Blasio was uh, when he ran for. Mayor was very progressive. He was he was he was as progressive as they come. Yeah. And then he flipped. He switched. He switched to Hillary Clinton. 
You saw what uh, side his uh, bread was buttered on. Wall Street yeah. must have went around the big city and say uh, said uh, support Hillary and uh, we'll butter your bread really thick. Uh -huh. And that's what happened. Follow the money trail. Like Jesse Ventura and uh, Sank, what's his last name? Uger? Something like that. Yeah, something like that. U-N-G, uh, something. Yeah. Like that. But anyway, follow the money trail. Um, I think Jesse Ventura was the first to say it. Follow the money trail. Um, wow, that's an oldie. Yeah. That's an oldie but goodie. That's an oldie but goodie. Um, it's a, it's a, what you call uh, something wisdom. Yeah. Well, people should, all elections, there, in other words, everyone who's an American citizen, whether you're a minority, uh, a young person, female, poor, middle class, whatever, should be able to vote, and every election should be based on popular vote. Simple numbers, that's it. No more flim flamming with the electoral college and super delegates. No more shenanigans. I think you should be able to vote in any state too. Well, you know? uh, uh, on a national level. Yeah. If you happen to be on vacation. Or you're in college. Yeah, let's say you're in college in, in California right. and you're from uh, South Carolina. Yeah. Well, if the presidential election uh, comes up or um, uh, let's say your state uh, Congress and Senate, some people up for re-election. You're you're like that's like an absentee ballot, right? For your Why state. Why can't you just regularly vote? I don't know. You know, I mean, yeah. it should be made that way, but uh, nobody is interested in making voting easier. Yeah. So, but, but what I under okay. from what I understand, like using New York City as an example, there were many Bernie Sanders votes that were just tossed to the side. Provisional ballots. Right. Yeah. Right. So you're living in a very corrupt capitalist system and uh... And they don't want anything changed. God no. forbid we get changes and real democracy. Right. right. God forbid okay. things should go the way they're supposed to go. But uh, I have to, before you get up, I have to a mention something to you before you get out of the seatbelt. Let me go off the air. Thank you for joining us for Progressive Discussions. We'll see you next time. And, rem you don't trip. and remember, worst case scenario, right in Bernie Sanders. Why don't you don't trip? Oh, no, no, I see it. I see it. Thank you. I see it. Thank you. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.